Hello, it's Jesse with ZBH Tech, and I am back with you today on a topic that's been pretty hot over the last few days regarding TP-Link routers. And I just wanted to make a video today and discuss, should you replace it? What should you do? How do you proceed? So without further ado, let's get started. Hello, it's Jesse with ZBH Tech, and I am back with you today on a topic that's been pretty hot over the last few days regarding TP-Link routers. And I just wanted to make a video today and discuss, should you replace it? What should you do? How do you proceed? So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so is this safe, this TP-Link router? Is this safe to have on your network? And what should you do if you have a TP-Link router? So personally, I have a whole bunch of TP-Link uh, access points, both indoor, outdoor. I've done some videos on them. And I just recently changed out <clears throat> my router with a different brand. And then the news story hit a couple of days later that the US government is looking to ban, possibly, TP-Link routers. So let's discuss that and see what that means. Okay, so some of the information that I'm getting today is coming from a CNET article, and there's been actually lots of articles. Uh, Bleeping Computers has one, CNET. Most tech websites are discussing um, this topic. And so what I did is I, I'm pulling some of this information to the CNET article, which I will put in a link to this in the description. But it looks like currently about 65% of U.S. routers that are home and small business uh, are made by TP-Link. And so what is going on? So Microsoft released a report that talked about a cyber attack originating from China. And it looks like the TP, a lot of TP-Link devices were used as kind of a botnet. Uh, a place for the hackers to leap off of and perform an attack. And the reason that this happens is because if you were to perform an attack from a particular IP address or a data center, it's pretty easy to block that IP address and to stop that attack from happening. But if you can distribute your attack across thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of devices that you have successfully hijacked to perform a particular task, like a denial of service attack or some other kind of hack, it's way harder to stop that uh, because it is so distributed and so spread out over many regions, parts of the country, uh, different ISPs, different data centers, uh, different locations. And so what was happening is using a, what's called a password spray, uh, hackers were able to take over many, many of these TP-Link routers. What is a password spray? Well, that is a term that is used for basically uh, the default username and password that is uh, comes with the router is never changed by the end user, and therefore it's easy to overtake or to compromise that router and then have it perform your attack or your... Um, bad behavior, whatever that is. And so the password spray is really is what is mentioned. At least that's the information that we have right now. So like if you have your own username and your own password and you use it for Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, your email, your banking, if you use the same credentials, your email address and your password, then it is very easy for hackers to compromise all of your accounts. Um, not just one. And so basically it's a similar type of thing. So we're going to go over, number one, I'm going to go over some things you can do to minimize your risk uh, with keeping your TP-Link router in place. And then I'll just kind of give up my final uh, thoughts on if you should replace it or if you shouldn't. So number one, change the default username or excuse me password you can't really usually you can't change the username uh, some devices you can but with these tp links most of the home versions you can't change them the usernames but you can change the password so rule always rule number one in any network equipment uh, always change 
the password from the default password. That You should do that right out of the box. There's a lot of them now that are coming out that force you to change them. Um, but not always, especially if you're using older equipment. So tip number one, change that password. Make it complex, make it at least 18 to 20 characters long, save it in your password manager, which you should be using, and that's that right there would have protected you from a password spray attack. Number two, perform some testing on your network. Meaning, so let me pull up an article here. Um, actually not an article, but just some of my notes. So there is a site, and I'll put these links in the description. There's a site by um, Glo uh, Gibson Research Corporation. It's called Shields Up. And what that does is it, <clears throat> you visit this website, <clears throat> excuse me, it lets you, uh, it detects your uh, IP address that you're coming from, and then it performs a scan of that IP address to see which ports you have open and if you have UPnP turned on. Uh, so number one, I would go to this site and I would perform these tests. That will also tell you if your router is has ports that are open uh, to the internet. Now what a port is used for is if you open it, usually you will you would do something like this, like if you wanted to run an FTP server or a mail server, or if you have a particular, like you wanna run a VPN server on your network, you would open up a particular port and it would map to an IP address on the inside of your network so that devices that are on the internet, on the outside of your home network, could reach into your network and do something, whether that's connect to a VPN, connect to a file server, uh, connect to a Plex server, whatever the case may be. And so this is done with port forwarding. You wanna make sure that you turn off all port forwarding, unless you have a good reason to have something on, get that turned off. For example, like an SMTP mail server would be port 25. Uh, DNS is port 53. So businesses have ports open all the time, but they, use, they do it in a manner that's safe. Um, and at home, there's really no reason to really do that. There could be, you know, for a VPN server, there are some cases. So I'm not saying nobody should do it, but if you don't know, you shouldn't do it. And if you don't have the expertise to know how to protect that, then you should just turn it off. So run the scan, see if it comes back with anything that is questionable and it will show you. So as you run this scan, it will go through all the common ports and it will show you a green box for everything that's good and it'll show you red for anything that is a problem. UPnP is a technology that most routers have and most manufacturers now are leaving that off, but it used to be on by default. So if you, especially if you have a router older than a couple of years, you're gonna really make sure you run that test on, on Shields Up as well. And it's there, it's right on that front page. Again, I'll put a link to this. And so if your UPnP is on, what that means is it allows applications on the inside of your network to automatically open up ports on your firewall so that it can establish communication between the inside of your network and the outside internet or the untrusted side of the internet. And that is really not good. Now, software developers a lot of times do this so that their applications work seamlessly through your home router, but they're plugging or they're punching holes into your firewall to allow their application to work. And I, that's, that is not good. So immediately turn that off and reboot your router, uh, get that UPnP service turned off so that you are in control of those ports and how they forward and where they forward to. So that is uh, step number two. Um, step number three is to take a bigger look at, well, this really goes into more of like a privacy issue, but who do you point your DNS to? Uh, do you point your DNS to your internet provider? Uh, again, this is more of a privacy concern. Um, but I do want to bring up that you should be aware, are you pointing to Google's 8.8.8.8? .8 are you pointing to Cloudflare? Like where is your router, router pointing to and how protected are the D, is the DNS that you're using? Um, and so that is, uh, that's step number, th or, uh, tip number three. So we've got changing our password, running shields up, turning off UPnP and checking our ports. Um, 
Three was more of a privacy focused, uh, but it does relate to this topic, which is a DNS. You should know where your DNS is going. And I think number four, and these aren't really in any particular order other than number one, change that password. Number four is firmware, firmware, firmware. What, let me grab my device here. Where or what firmware is this device using? Have you ever updated your firmware? Have you even thought about updating? If you can log into this device, and there's so many different IP addresses on a private network, but basically you're gonna to go to your gateway. Whatever your gateway is, you can look on your computer, uh, 192.168.x.x is usually it, meaning .0.1.1.1.5.1. It's usually always .1. Go to that IP address, sign in with that username and that secure new password that you have, that you've set up, and you're gonna browse to the update menu, usually it's under system, and you're gonna check the firmware, and you're going to click update, and you're gonna make sure that the firmware is updated on your router. Manufacturers all the time are releasing updates to fix security vulnerabilities on their equipment, and in this case, routers. TP-Link releases them quite often, other companies do as well. If you have an older router, more than five years old, you should replace it for a lot of reasons. But for security, they've probably stopped performing updates to old that old router of yours. So just because it's working doesn't mean it's safe. And so usually a good rule of thumb is anything beyond two years from the end of life. So the last uh, year that they manufactured that, they usually will support it for another couple of years with security updates, and then they're done. They don't really tell you they're done, they just stop. So if any new vulnerabilities come out, you're out of luck. It's not gonna be updated. So keeping your router firmware up to date um, is a real, real important thing as well. So those are four things that you can do. If you do those four things, um, you're 95% going to be protected, even with a TP-Link router. Um, there are vulnerabilities in all routers. Now, don't let anyone tell you that, if they tell you that they have a router, they can recommend it's always gonna be safe, run the other direction because that doesn't exist. Whether you're Cisco, whether you're Netgear, TP-Link, Arrow, uh, any of these companies, I could go through a whole list of them. They all, if you go to their website and their support sections, I guarantee you they all have uh, bulletins, security bulletins explaining a security vulnerability they found and that you need to update the firmware in order to fix the problem because they've plugged the hole and all of them do this. And so TP-Link is hot in the water right now uh, because they have so many devices, a lot of ISPs use their devices. So you may have one and not even realize it. So you should be checking that admin page, that 192.168.1.1.0.1, you know, .1, whatever that is. You should be checking that because there's a good chance if you got it from your ISP, it's probably a TP link. And you need to understand what that means. If you don't take your security serious, no one else is going to do it for you. Uh, so you need to take the bull by the horns, you know, for a figure of speech, and you need to be checking these things. And I would love to help answer some questions if anyone has questions about any of these things. Um, I do this for a living. Um, I have lots of different IT experience, whether it be through security or server application, administration, all kinds. But uh, this is really important. It's important for you to protect yourself. So last thing um, is, should I replace my TP-Link router? Well, there's a lot we really don't know right now. I know that the government, U.S. government, is launching some uh, investigations behind why this happened, who this happened to. So more will be coming out. So my my um, what I, I like to default to the most safest step, which is I'm going to leave my TP-Link access points in place because they are on the inside of my network. Uh, but my router I have replaced, and I am going to leave it that way until I hear a good reason to put my TP-Link router back into place. And I'm being overly cautious maybe, um, but I do like to err on the side of caution and less on trust. I want a company to show me 
why I should trust them instead of just giving them that trust. Uh, but still, you may be in a position where you uh, can't replace that for whatever reason. You maybe can't afford a new router. Um, it's it's in a place you can't easily get to. You'd have to change the... I mean, there could be a lot of work you have to do just to change your router because it's kind of an impactful thing. Uh, it is an impactful event to change out your router. So at least at a minimum, do those four things we talked about. Um, but if you have the means to do it, I would replace it. Uh, like I said, I'm keeping my TP-Link internal devices um, because they are already secure. I know what they're doing. The firms are up to date. It's not sitting on the edge or the outside of my network. Your router sits between your private network and the internet, right? So it's on the edge. And that edge device, <clears throat> I want to make sure that I don't have any... any um, anything compromised that I can control, right? So those are my tips. Um, please comment below if you have any questions, if you have any experience with us, uh, you know, these things that I've been talking about. I hope to be able to make some more videos about uh, what you can do to secure and to make things more private. And those are really two different things. Security and privacy, they overlap and they bleed together, but those are really two different topics. So uh, if you find this content helpful, please subscribe and, uh, to my channel. Like this video, share it. Uh, I wanna help everyone keep as safe as you can, because like I said before, if you don't take that on yourself, nobody else is going to do it for you. A lot of times we buy these cheap devices, relatively cheap compared to what enterprises spend. We put them in our network, we plug them in and we let them go, right? Um, and we have to be more on top of it than that or else we're going to find ourselves uh, possibly in a bad place. And so uh, thank you for watching and have a good one.